In this lesson, we're going to discuss parallel and perpendicular lines. From hopefully your geometry class, you know that parallel lines are two lines of a coordinate plane that will never intersect. And perpendicular lines, this picture below, they are two lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle. Now what we're interested in is discussing the slopes of parallel versus perpendicular lines. Lines that are parallel, well, they have the same slope. So if a line had a slope of 1 over 4, its parallel line would be 1 over 4. Perpendicular, this is the one to remember. So parallel lines, the slope is the same. Perpendicular lines, if you had line 1 had a slope of 1 over 4, it's perpendicular slope. So line 2 would have to be the opposite reciprocal, meaning you flip the numbers and you change it from positive to negative. So for a perpendicular slope, you have to flip the fraction and change the sign. So a couple more examples of that. Let's say we had line 1 here and we've got line 2 here. If I had line 1 had a slope of 5 then the perpendicular slope, that's how you put that for perpendicular slope, I'd have to flip that, meaning it would have to be 1 over 5. And because that 5 was positive, the 1 over 5 would have to be negative. Let's say we have a slope of negative 2 over 3. Perpendicular would have to flip the fraction, so instead we have to write 3 over 2. And because this was negative, perpendicular slope is going to be positive. Let's take a look at a couple examples. It says, determine if the lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. We need to remember our slope formula. So our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That will determine the slope between line 1. And that'll help us determine the, determine the slope for line 2 as well. So for line 1 here, subtracting the y's, I'm going to take 9 minus 6 over, I've got to subtract my x's. So if I started with the 9, I have to start with that 6 minus 4. So on top, I get 3. On the bottom, I get 2. So the slope of line 1 is 3 over 2. Slope of line 2, I'm going to take 6 minus 3 to subtract my y's over 3 minus 1 to subtract the x's. I get 3 on top, 2 on the bottom. So line 2 has a slope of 3 over 2. Notice that line 1 and line 2 slopes came out as the same. And I know that if they have the same slope, that would make them parallel. Let's look at example two. Again, I'm going to use this, our slope formula. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So to find line one, I'm going to do 4 minus 1 over 7 minus 2. Remember, if I start with the 4 on the bottom of the x's, I have to start with that 7. So we get 3 on top over 5 on the bottom. So line 1 has a slope of 3 over 5. Line 2, I'm going to start with negative 4 minus 1 over 8 minus 5. And I'm going to get negative 5 over 3. 
Now take a look at these. Line 1 had a slope of 3 over 5. Line 2 has a slope of negative 5 over 3. The fractions have flipped. One's positive, one's negative. Therefore, these two lines would be perpendicular. If, for example, they were, the slopes were not the same, they were not the opposite reciprocal, then we would be choosing the answer of neither. Next, we want to talk about writing an equation of a line in slope-intercept form. To do that, we need our point-slope form. So remember, our y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, in which we need the slope and a point to plug in. So if we want to write the equation of each line in slope-intercept form, it needs to be parallel to y equals 5x minus 3, and it has to go through the point 1, 4. The two things that you need to plug in are slope and a point. Well, the slope of this line would be 5 over 1, and a parallel slope would match that, meaning it would have to be the same. So we're going to use the same slope of 5, and it's going to have to go through the point 1, 4. So I'm going to plug the slope into the m. I'm going to plug the x value in for x1, and the y value is going to go here for y1. So we're going to get y minus, I'm going to plug in the y value right there, that's 4, equals my slope of 5 times x minus, I need to plug in the x value here. From here we just, we distribute on the right side. So 5 times x, 5 times negative 1. I get 5x minus 5. And then I need to add the 4 to both sides to complete this. I get y equals 5x minus 1. Now, if I were to graph this, I would take y equals 5x minus 1 and y equals 5x minus 3, graph them on the same coordinate plane, and make sure that they were parallel, meaning that when I drew both lines, they're not going to intersect. Now, these are, this is not a description of those lines. This is just an example. When you draw this on a graph, make sure they're parallel, meaning they would not intersect. We're going to do the same thing, but we need to find the perpendicular slope. So we need to write the equation of this line that's going to be perpendicular to a line y equals 1 fourth x minus 3 and goes through the point 8, 4. So the perpendicular slope, the slope of this line is 1 over 4. Perpendicular means I'd have to flip it to 4 over 1 and change it from positive to negative. So this is the slope I'm going to plug in, and I'm going to use the point 8, 4. So I got my point slope form, so I need to plug in the perpendicular slope and the x and y value into the equation. So it's going to look like this. I'm going to say y minus the y value is 4. So y minus 4 equals our slope of negative 4 times x minus 8. Now we go through and solve. Then we distribute. So we get y minus 4 equals negative 4x plus 32. Add 4 to both sides. We get y equals negative 4x plus 36. This is a line that would be perpendicular to y equals 1 fourth x minus 3 and would go through the point 8, 4. If you are still confused, you need another example, 
call me over and I will complete this example.